Here we go. Week 11. What madness will it bring us this time? We've got two big ranked versus ranked matchups in the SEC. We'll be predicting those games individually here on the channel over the next few days. We'll also be doing the same for Colorado and Texas Tech. But we've got five games over here that could also provide some madness across the college football landscape. Games that could drastically shape up the college football playoff race as the race gets tighter and tighter, closer and closer with each passing week. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad you could join us today with these Week 11 predictions. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. That includes these expert picks, some of the best picks in the entire country. We have beat out over 80% of the national handicappers each of the last six years. We're going to make it seven straight years by the end of this season, and we are just 23 signups away from reaching our goal in 2024, which means we will do a 24-hour live stream if we reach that goal. So 23 more sign-ups before the end of the year. We do a 24-hour live stream. You get to win big with us each and every week. It's a win-win for everybody. So go sign up for those picks. Become a member of our GE Nation today. Again, the link down in the description below over on thegridironexpert.com. So let's dive into these games. Again, the big games, Alabama, LSU, Georgia, Ole Miss, Colorado, Texas Tech. We're going to break those down individually over the coming days. These are five games that maybe are flying under the radar that could also be really good games and maybe result in a few upsets. Who knows? We'll start up at the top in the ACC, and we'll start with Miami and Georgia Tech. Miami amazes me. They're 9-0, and but they continue to find ways to win. You know, look at it. They, they survived the Hail Mary, controversial Hail Mary for some, against Virginia Tech. They had to mount a 25-point comeback against California. They had uh, that shootout against Louisville. They were able to win on the road. And then just last week, we're down 11 in the third quarter to Duke before going on that massive 36-3 run to beat the Blue Devils. So Miami, undefeated, finding ways to win. Some would say, though, overrated, maybe not as good as the record says. I'm not saying that, but I've heard a lot of people doing it. Again, a win's a win, though, in my eyes. Georgia Tech, on the other hand, they are 5-4, and four, but don't let the record fool you. Georgia Tech's a solid team, and they have played Miami close over the last five, six years. They've played them very, very close. They've actually won three of the last five meetings against Miami. That includes a 23-20 win last year when Mario Cristobal refused to take a knee. Miami fumbled the ball, and Georgia Tech won in the final seconds. Five of the last six games between Miami and Georgia Tech have actually been decided by one possession, but the storyline here for Georgia Tech is does Haynes King play? Had a bye week to help him get more healthy, but he's also missed each of the last two games, and in those games, Georgia Tech only mustered 19 points combined against Notre Dame and Virginia Tech. So even if he does play, first off, if he doesn't play, they're in big trouble, right? Even if he does play, the question then becomes, can Georgia Tech slow down Cam Ward and Miami? Cam Ward averaging over 370 passing yards per game. The Hurricanes having the number one offense in the country, averaging over 556 yards per game. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say despite the history that we've seen, this game was closed for a little while. Maybe a little bit similar to that Duke game for Miami. But the Hurricanes pull away in the second half, regardless of if Haynes King plays or not. Miami angry after that loss they suffered last year, which was their own fault. It wasn't, you know, Georgia Tech doing something crazy. It was Miami's fault for losing that game. But they're out for revenge. They're out to avenge that loss. They're going to get the job done on the road and improve to 10-0, and one step closer to an ACC title in a college football playoff berth. Michigan at number eight, Indiana. These rankings, again, of course, from the AP poll. We're not the college football playoff poll because we haven't seen that yet. But you look at Indiana. Hard to believe, right? They are a top 10 team in the country, and they're favored by two touchdowns against the reigning national champions. They are absolutely the real deal. Don't let someone tell you otherwise. Don't let someone sit there and tell you, oh, Indiana's not that good because they haven't played anybody. Uh, their schedule's been weak, this, that, and the other. It doesn't matter because here's the thing. If, if Indiana was struggling in those games, maybe I'd kind of attest to that, can, uh, agree with that. But Indiana is winning all these games comfortably. They are dominating these games. That's what we saw last week. Get down 10 nothing against Michigan State, then rattled off 47 straight points. And here's the thing. I think they're going to dominate again. I think they're going to dominate again at home against Michigan. Why? Not because of the offense, but because of the defense. Listen to these numbers here. Indiana has the third-ranked defense in the entire country, giving up just 261 total yards per game. And they have, this is the big number, the number one rushing defense in the country. The Hoosiers allowing just 72.6 rushing yards per game. 
What can Michigan not do? They can't throw the ball, which means what do they want to do? They want to run the ball. Michigan's a one-dimensional offense that only knows how to run the ball, and they're going to go up against the best rushing defense in the country. That's not a great recipe for success because when Michigan's run game gets stopped, they're going to have to win the game through the air. They don't have a quarterback, and they're not going to be able to do so and win the game through the air on the road against Indiana. Not against a secondary that has posted 11 interceptions this year and a defensive line that already has racked up 31 sacks this season. So Michigan is in big, big trouble coming on the road to Bloomington. It was going to be a great crowd for an undefeated squad, a team that has actual playoff aspirations. I predict Indiana wins by double digits, and they move to 10-0. and 0. Then they get their bye week. And then the massive game on November 23rd against Ohio State, a game that has not just, you know, college football playoff implications, but could determine whether or not uh, the Hoosiers or the Buckeyes get to the Big Ten championship game. So a major, major game coming up for Indiana. They are the real deal, and they are playoff contenders, no doubt about it. South Carolina at number 24, Vanderbilt. I Look, t- even two months ago, this was not a game that I thought I'd have up my big board, and yet here we are. And I love this game. I'm excited for this game. This is typically a game I kind of overlook, not this year. South Carolina coming off that massive 24-point win over at Texas A&M, handing the Aggies their first conference loss of the year. Vanderbilt, though, a nationally ranked team, 6-3, and three, just came off a 10-point road win against Auburn. I know Auburn's garbage this year, but still an impressive feat for the Commodores. And both these teams arguably better than their final or their record shows right now. South Carolina has three losses, but two of them came to LSU and Alabama by a combined five points. Vanderbilt has three losses, all by a combined 10 points, including a three-point overtime loss to Missouri and a three-point loss to Texas. So both these teams playing very, very good football, better than the 5-3 and three and 6-3 and three records that they both have. But I actually think this could be a low-scoring game. I really do. I believe this could be a relatively low-scoring game. The Vanderbilt defense has been very solid this year, to be expected, under Clark Lee. They are 42nd in the nation in total defense. South Carolina just 91st in the nation in total offense, although they did have 530 yards against Texas A&M last week. South Carolina's defense is 16th in the nation. Vanderbilt's offense just 107th, but they're getting the job done through Diego Pavia, and that's the other battle, right? The two defenses against mediocre offenses and the quarterback battle of Lenora Sellers of South Carolina and Diego Pavia of Vanderbilt, both of which have been outstanding this year, both of which have taken great care of the football this year. But ultimately, I'm going to go with the guy that in my eyes has been a little bit more consistent. It's going to be a Diego Pavia. He has been phenomenal this year in every game he has played. I think he only has, what, four interceptions on the season. He was phenomenal against Alabama. He got the job done against Hugh Freeze for the third time in his career against Auburn. Played very well against Texas as well, even though the uh, the Commodores did lose that game. They've got a slight home field advantage here. Vanderbilt, not the toughest place to play in the world, but better to be there than playing in Columbia, just as Texas A&M. Give me Vandy to beat the Gamecocks. Maybe... A little bit of an emotional letdown after that big win over Texas A&M. The Commodores win their seventh game of the year, guaranteeing themselves a winning season. And believe it or not, keep their hopes alive for an SEC title berth. The Commodores are not out of the SEC title race if they win on Saturday. And I believe they will. Watch out for Vandy, guys. Their season far from over. But regardless, they win this game and they will clinch a winning season even if they were to lose every game left on their schedule. How about this? Arkansas State and Louisiana. Not very often you see a game up here that, number one, doesn't feature a ranked team. Number two, a group of five match. I know that we have anything against the group of five, but typically when we're talking about big conference races or playoff races, we're talking about some more power programs. But Arkansas State, Louisiana is a very underrated matchup that you might want to watch out for here because these are the top two teams in the Sunbelt Western Division. Arkansas State is sitting at 5-3, and 3-1 three, three and one overall. Louisiana, 7-1, 4-0 oh overall. So this game practically decides the division. Louisiana, if they win it, will pretty much have the division on lock. Arkansas State, they win it, they jump into first place in the division in what would be a big year for Butch Jones. But here's the thing. As fun as Arkansas State is to watch, as fun as Louisiana is to watch, the Raging Cajuns, uh, for me, almost a top 25 team, right on the outside looking into the top 25. Arkansas State has not won in Lafayette since 2012. They have not won in Lafayette since 2012. They've lost three of the, or they've only won three of the last 10 meetings against Louisiana. One of them was last year when they beat them by 20 points, 37 to 17 in Jonesboro. But now I'm expecting an opposite result. Arkansas State won 37 to 17 last year, expect maybe a Louisiana victory by about 20, 24 points this year. The Cajuns are just two good guys. They are really, really good. 
They rank 26th in the nation in total offense. They're averaging over 440 yards per game. They're averaging nearly 180 rushing yards per game. Arkansas State gives up 213.8 rushing yards per game. I expect Louisiana to dominate the line of scrimmage. I expect them to have their way with Arkansas State on the ground. The most similar opponent that Arkansas State has faced to Louisiana this year in conference play was Texas State, and the Red Wolves lost that game 41-9 to on the road. So I expect Louisiana to dominate on both sides of the ball. Arkansas State just not built for a game of this caliber, not built to win a game on the road like this. Still should be a bowl team, but not quite there to win a division. Louisiana wins this game, improves to 8-1, and one, undefeated in conference play, and could find themselves in the top 25 as early as next week. And then finally, last game on the big board. Got to talk about it. The Holy War. The Holy War. Number 9, BYU at Utah. And how about this? The Holy War is a conference game this year. And here's the thing. I wish, I wish that Cam Rising was healthy. I wish Utah was like in the top 15. With BYU playing as well as they've been, I would love for this game to be a a top 15 showdown, top 10 showdown with major Big 12 title implications. That would be awesome. That would just be absolutely amazing. That's what I was hoping for, but that's not what we got. Instead, we've got a top 10 BYU team who's playing fantastic football against a Utah team that started off 4-0. And now has lost four straight. These two teams, great rivalry game, one of those underrated rivalries in college football. They have not met since 2021. BYU won that game back in 2021, snapping a nine-game losing streak to the Utes. But the question I have in this game is, how does each offense fare against the opponent's defense? That's what I'm trying to see. Jake Rexlaff has been phenomenal for BYU this year. Over 1,800 yards and 17 touchdowns. Going up now against a Utah defense that gives up just 170 passing yards per game. That's 13th in the nation. So can he uh, do well against this Utah defense, which really isn't the weakness of the team. It's more so the offense. So the Utah offense, the question I have for them is, Can they get anything going against this very stingy BYU defense that's 25th in the nation against the pass and 38th overall, a Utah offense that has not scored over 20 points in four straight games? They have not scored over 20 points since their win, I believe, at Oklahoma State when they only scored 22. Losing Cam Rising has completely derailed this team, just like it kind of did last year. Last year, they were able to finish 8-5. and five. This year, 4-4, four and four, and continually to get worse. The game is at Utah, a very difficult place to play, no doubt about it, but it's still an in-state game for BYU. I expect a lot of Cougar fans to be there for this game. The Cougars have much more to play for. They are playing much better football. They are significantly more healthy. I think BYU actually owns the edge just about in every aspect of this game, with the exception of home field advantage, and I believe they can overcome that. Give me BYU to beat the Utes on the road. Rivalry renewed in conference play, but the Cougars get the win and improve to 9-0. and Their Big 12 title hopes and college football playoff hopes very much alive. So what a crazy year we have where we could maybe see Indiana and BYU both make the college football playoff. That's the beauty of the 12-team format. So guys, there you have it. Those are our week 11 predictions for the five most underrated games of this week. And again, we've got those ranked versus ranked matchups and then Colorado, Texas Tech, of course, coming your way over the next few days. But leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Let us know what you think about these games. Share your predictions. Who's going to get upset? Are all these teams, the predictions going to come true? We want to know what you had to think and what's about to be another fantastic wild weekend of college football. So once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com, home of these expert picks. Just 23 signups away from reaching our goal for 2024, which means a 24-hour live stream for you right here on the channel. Go sign up today. Again, thegridironexpert.com. Become a member of our GE Nation. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on The Gridiron Expert.